Hi. I did uh, say on the films that uh, if anybody wants to ask questions, I'll try and answer them. And I've been asked one that's a bit awkward and I've been thinking about it. So I hope I don't un upset too many Iwama people, Iwama trained people. But I want to give a balanced view of what I think Perhaps not of all the stars, I would never live long enough to cover all them, but the star known as Iwama star, that was taught by Saito Sensei more than Ueshiba Sensei, because, uh, O Sensei, sorry, because we don't really know what O Sensei taught, you know, we see very few films of him. And he's mainly doing kokunagi or rimanagi. Very, very few techniques. But over the 23, 24 years of Saito Sensei being not only his student, but also his carer, means that he was with him night and day whenever O Sensei wanted him. When I was in, staying in Iwama, my friend, uh, just a short story really first. My friend um, said we were sleeping in the dojo and, and at the side of the main dojo there's a small kitchen. It's called Chisai Shokodo and it means the small kitchen. And we would sleep there in the afternoons and keep our clothes and geese and bags there. And in the evenings you would sleep in the main dojo when everybody had gone. You'd roll your beds out and sleep there for the night. Anyhow, in the Chisai Shokodo, we would sleep in the afternoon. And a friend of mine who I went to Wilma with, who always seems to be in a habit of perhaps not doing the wrong things, but not doing the right things, and making life very funny for those around him and a wonderful friend he was, what well, still is. Anyhow, I try not to mention names even though sometimes they jump out. This small doorbell was in this room, just a very small square with a round button but in England anyhow we see on front doors so unbeknown to me he decides to press this doorbell no, no sound nothing keeps pressing it and he turns and says I wonder what this doorbell is for well, very shortly after, we soon found out one of the Japanese Uchideshis come running from Saito Sensei's house. Saying, what do you think you're doing pressing that bell? That bell was only pressed by O Sensei and it was to call Saito Sensei. So the, the funny thing was, this led to a story being told by Saito Sensei to us and he said don't press that bell because that I've left the bell there because it the place has to be exactly as O Sensei left it and he wanted to keep everything in place and what we found was that Saito Sensei said because it was just the bell at the other end of the button and it would ring, and it would ring in Saito Sensei's house. And Saito Sensei and his wife both were carers. So Saito Sensei would run across to as fast as he could to O Sensei and say, Hey Sensei, what, would you, what do you need me for? And O Sensei would often say, I don't want you, I want your wife. So <laughs> Saito Sensei would have to run back and tell his wife that she was needed. And uh, 
I still find that funny because a bell doesn't speak and yet it can have a very strange story to it. I wonder how many kilometres or miles Saito since he run over the 24 years of caring for them and um, being his student at the same time. O Sensei, as I'm sure you'll know, gave Saito Sensei a piece of land to build their small house, a bungalow we call it in the UK, and said, build your house there and for your services, that's what you can have. And I didn't realize until this bell was pressed that that was a communication that they had between them. So, back to the subject. The subject was, I was asked, is, in my opinion, the lineage safe of the Awama Starlight Kido with Hitohira? I haven't looked into why Hitohira changed his name to Hitohira, but he done so. He also has given his son, one of his son's name, Morie. And Morie is a name that's given, um, I think was a religious leader, gave it to Osensi. Osensi gave his name to Saito Sensi, Morie Saito Sensi. So perhaps it's fitting that Itahira gives it to his son. This I have no idea. I question it. I have no idea why he would be able to give it. Perhaps you learned people can tell me if it's a name that can be passed on easily. So, is the lineage safe of Iwama style, Aikido, with Itahira? The simple answer is yes and no, in my opinion. Why yes first is because he's very strong in teaching the weapons. And the thing that denotes Iwama Aikido from, we'll say, flowing styles, I often mention the word Hombu Dojo, where the Awama weapons have not been kept and they're not trained. So he's keeping the lineage very strong in the weapons. But he's changed a lot of the weapons from his father's. And his father made, created all these weapons that Osensi didn't teach. Osensi taught the 31 Carter. And Saito Sensei told us that he asked him to put the anti to it. Saito Sensei asked me when I, when I was awarded my fifth dan in Iwama, he said, Tony, please develop Ken and Joe so that the Iwama weapons are not lost in the world. And I gave him my word I would do so. And I made some Ken and I made some Joe, Kumi Joes, I made four of them, created them completely myself, but I created them from Kumi Tachis, Kumi Joes, and I took all the parts that I found difficult in the Kumi Tachis, in the variations mainly, and I took the parts from the, the Joe that I found also very difficult. There's always parts when you're doing Carters or partner practice, Kumi Joes, Kentai Joes. There's always parts, no matter how high a level you are, that don't quite fit. So I made these four Kumi Joe to make them fit, to make sense of them, because I'd given him my word that I would carry it on, developing them. I suddenly realised and dropped this and I don't teach them anymore. The reason is the same as Hitohira, he's modified and changed and some for the better, 
But what's happening now is I'm very disillusioned with Iwama Aikido because I don't really know what it is anymore. I'm happy with my foundation and I'm 100% a follower of Saito Sensei and he's the Aikido he taught me. But the weapons are made, given to us to improve Taijutsu. Since he would say, when doing weapons, think of Taijutsu. When doing Taijutsu, think of weapons. How can one do this if your mind's full of, oh, I've got to learn all these weapons and then next year it, they'll be modified and changed. Oh, I've got to learn these weapons. Your mind is so full of the technical that you don't actually find the spiritual flow of what it should do. It should, the kima subi no tach, for those of you who know this, is done straight after the Ken partner practices. So you do the saburis, ken, seven Ken saburis. That's like a warm up. Then you get serious and you say, okay, I've got to now tie together with another person. So we then do the Kima Subino Touch. It's wonderful. I love it. I never tire of it. It brings your Zanshin sharp. It makes your Zanshin sharp. Your blending. It has everything that I could ever want for in my Aikido. The Kuma Touches I also love. The Kumi Joes I love. But there's too many of them. There's far, far too many of them. And Hitahira, he's done things in his Aikido that I wasn't taught by his father. Yes, it does sound like a criticism, but the flowing styles on a Kotagaish, they go back to back once taking the wrist or the hand. Saito Sensei used to go in a diagonal move to the side look at the films, don't take my word for it. I go to the side. I know that most of the Iwama people that Saito Sensei taught go to the side. Why did he decide to go round the back? Perhaps O Sensei did. I know that the flowing styles do, but to me it's a great deal of movement unnecessarily. Another thing Saito Sensei taught us was Osensei's Aikido is very economical. You do as little as possible to execute the move you need. The flowing styles, they tend to do big movements, very beautiful, but you could never ever do this in a real situation. In a real situation, you might do a tenth of the whole technique. I remember once somebody went to punch me. I was in Czechoslovakia of all places, in a bar. Somebody went to punch me because I, he thought that I was speaking rudely against a black person. I didn't even know the black person was there at the bar. He was quite drunk. He kept started poking me, said apologise to him. I said, who, who? He pointed to the black person. I said, I don't need to apologise because I don't even know the person. The next thing, the punch came towards my face. All I remember is doing a quick catch, tweak the punch before it hit me. The nerve in the wrist here made him pass out. He was a very lucky man because in Czechoslovakia at that time there was lots of prostitutes in the hotels and five prostitutes almost picked him up rather than dragged him to the lift and took him back to his room. <laughs> the next morning he came down with his arm in a bandage and 
recognised me, what was strange, so he couldn't have been that drunk. And he came up to me and he said, I'd like to have a word with you. I said, I don't want any trouble, I don't want any trouble. He said, no, no, I don't mean that. He said, I just want to know, what the hell did you do to me? So you see, and that was a Nikio, but it was not the Nikio I would choose. It was a, a tenth, perhaps even a minuscule amount of a tenth even, but it worked. So Cytosensi to me is correct by minimalizing what you have to do. So to me the weapons have become far too vast, Hito Hero's extended on them, so I don't believe his lineage is like his father, it's watered down. very difficult for me to be honest with you, but I'm trying to be and also not be disrespectful. But sometimes I have children of my own and we got on fine. Sometimes children clash with their parents. They rebel. They'll do anything to go the opposite way to their parents. And that's as far as I'd like to go with that. But keeping Iwama Aikido strong, he's got a beautiful dojo and he's got a good following. Most of it, the following that I see of, of young people or new people, some of the Cytosensis older people like myself, students, did uh, give their allegiance to him and follow him, but the majority didn't. And, and I don't know what their story is, but mine is quite simple. I think he's a great master, and I was hoping that he was going to become even greater than his father in Aikido. But when you find a master, who is that good, that outstanding. He understood the Western mind. He understood the Japanese mind. He gave the world far more than most people will ever know. Why would I need another master in my life? So when he passed away, I apologized to Hitohiro, as it was Hitohiro at the time. And I said to him, I would carry his name an organisation in the UK until we found another that we did. But I wouldn't be able to follow him because I was getting older and I'd still got a great deal in me that I'd got to work through from his father. So I couldn't follow him. So the answer to the question is, to me, he's changed a great deal of things that I was told not to do by his father. You'll notice that when they step with the Ken cups, they make big steps. They lift the foot quite high. This is completely wrong in Cytosensi's eyes because Cytosensi said, please keep your foot as close to the ground and don't allow the enemy to see you move it. Because as soon as the enemy sees that you're moving your foot, they know that you're going to come and attack them. And they could counter or prepare themselves. So you see, this is a complete opposite that the son is doing to what the father taught. There will be justifications why it's done, but I work on logic, I work on what does Tony think? What does my brain tell me is a good thing or bad? To me, keeping your foot close to the ground is much better than lifting it. In the early days, it was so exaggerated. It was like kick-starting an old motorbike. It was like a jumping stamp. 
we have to be careful because criticising styles we can all do and I hope that Iwama Aikido is safe in his hands I don't know who it's safe in whose hands anymore but I think if we could just learn from each other and remember above all it was a martial art intended the spiritual side the love the harmony this is all to be put into this melting pot and if you end up being a good spiritual person but with a very very strong martial side a martial attitude then you will use the techniques when it's required to be used but until that time you will be a kind person and you will develop yourself and your art and learn from everybody thank you these films will be continued but not so much on Facebook so if you wish to subscribe to my YouTube channel please do so and send comments or likes or dislikes whenever you wish. Thank you.